Beyond the brilliant foliage of these quaking aspens, a battle rages for the soul of our forests. Like most battles, it is fought by a dedicated few, and like all important battles, it affects multitudes. My name is Carl Adams. I, and the people you will see, have been in the battle for a long time. On one side, unfurling the flags of wilderness and environmental concern, are advocates for limiting access to select groups. On the other side, unfurling flags that few have seen are champions of access who believe our forests should be equally open to all. Largely uninvolved but ultimately impacted are the majority of ordinary Americans who come to our national forests for recreation. Now, the United States Forest Service is imposing new restrictions on travel, and forest users are becoming increasingly alarmed. The current skirmish in the battle for access is known as travel management, and it is having grave impacts. In response to complaints about shrinking access to public land, the House Subcommittee on National Parks, Forests, and Public Lands is holding hearings on opportunities for outdoor recreation. Witnesses give eloquent testimony about lost access. Uh, in the Little Belts, the decision closed all but two routes in the 90,000-acre Middle Fork of the Judith Wilderness Study Area, all of the routes in the Hoover Creek and Tillinghast drainages, and about a third of the routes in the Deep Creek Tenderfoot area permanently. Millions of Americans visit our national forests each year, seeking refuge from the stress and congestion of city life. As a family, we go camping several times a year. I gotta say, it's some of the best times that we have as a family together. You know, they've enjoyed it ever since. We, we roast marshmallows by the fire and uh, tell scary camp stories and, you know, everybody just has a great time. With the Multiple Use Sustained Yield Act, Congress recognized our need for recreation by declaring, it is the policy of the Congress that the national forests are established and shall be administered for outdoor recreation, range, timber, watershed, wildlife, and fish purposes. Virtually all forest visitors arrive in cars, SUVs, trucks, and campers, many with families, pets, bulky equipment, and possibly a quad or motorcycle. Roads are absolutely essential to visitors. Most forests are too steep and heavily timbered for off-road travel. Even hikers can't penetrate dense brush on some slopes. Explorers, immigrants, miners, and especially loggers built thousands of wagon roads, railroads, and logging roads. Visitors were mostly free to find and explore them. Vehicles were restricted to designated routes in sensitive and heavily used areas often with the support of local clubs and volunteers. Our four-wheel drive club has contributed about 3,000 volunteer hours doing projects like this sign and these logs to keep people out of the meadow. In 2005, the Forest Service changed its policy from open to motor vehicles unless designated as closed to closed unless designated as open. The National Environmental Policy Act, NEPA, requires federal agencies to prepare statements about actions which may significantly affect the environment. Each of our forests launched a separate NEPA study of travel management. The proposed action was designating routes and limiting vehicles to them. But alternatives to this action, such as education, and better enforcement of existing regulations were not studied. Instead, the forest defined alternatives in terms of how many existing roads should be closed. The first step was to update forest system maps. Unmapped roads were recorded, but categorized as unauthorized, despite the fact that many were in regular use or essential to local communities. 
Our commission was told by the Forest Service in January of 2009 that they were going to implement the travel management plan. They told us then that they did not anticipate closing any roads. We found out within a couple of weeks that what they were going to do was create a system of roads, and inside of that system, all of the roads would be open. Outside of the system, the roads would all be closed. Nye County wrote to us and said that their plan was substandard in many ways, but most profoundly in the lack of nearly 3,000 commonly used roads that were not added to the system. The forest conducted elaborate studies and received tens of thousands of comments from environmentalists and other users. Now we've completed about 77% of our forests have completed this motor, uh, motorized vehicle use map that identifies a system of routes and trails that's currently open. And now we continue to work on identifying the proper size road system that we need um, to be able to access the National Forest for management and for recreational access. You may find it interesting that none of the comments by Eureka County resulted in any changes to the proposed decision. This process was repeated 155 times at great cost and resulted in closing about one half of all the roads that exist on the ground. In some forests, private landowners appealed roads crossing their property, even if they had been open to the public for decades. Sections of roads like this were then removed from the maps. The forests also implemented a new system of seasonal closures, arbitrary dates when roads are closed without regard to actual conditions on the ground, excursions to see our beautiful forests after the first light snow may now be illegal. The cumulative result of route designation is a devastating loss of access. Here is a map of the Tahoe Forest before travel management. Now only these roads remain, and they are closed five months of each year, even if not blocked by snow. Ironically, the agency which seeks to prevent vehicle damage burns and pulverizes tens of thousands of acres to reduce fire hazard. They call this fuel reduction. This fire was deliberately started by the Forest Service to destroy brush. The smoke drifted into Reno, creating two days of smog. This sinister machine is reducing fuel by splintering everything in its path, changing scenes like this to this. But an old logging road nearby is closed. The new travel maps are nearly impossible to use. They have very few place names and no contour lines showing mountains. They don't show the names of roads outside the forest or even connections with roads in neighboring forests. They do not support computer mapping programs and GPS, which are becoming the preferred method of backcountry navigation. Visitors are somehow supposed to know that this is the road which connects Weber Lake with Yuba Pass and to know that these side roads are open to quads, but visitors can't reach them because the Weber Lake Yuba Pass Road is limited to highway legal vehicles for most of the year. Most of the new maps also have errors. In the Plumas Forest, this road on a map is impossibly overgrown and blocked at one end by the Forest Service itself with boulders. Legions of new rangers will be required to enforce route designation if they can read the maps. Forests say that many thousands of miles of roads remain open, but many roads shown as open are actually unusable or in dire need of maintenance. This road in the Plumas Forest is shown as open on the map, but is overgrown on the ground. Furthermore, it is a road to nowhere because the service closed this section, which connects it with another road. Here are some overgrown roads in the Tahoe and Toyabe forests. This is one of only two roads leading into the Carson Range above southwest Reno. Now this ditch can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
These roads are closed by fallen trees. Forest visitors have traditionally used roads to access undeveloped campsites, either for solitude or because developed sites close after Labor Day. We had a motor home, uh, which had all the facilities of home, uh, so we were able to go to remote areas and stay for extended periods uh, pretty comfortably, comfortably enough that the wife would go along. <laughs> However, driving off a designated route to camp is punishable by a fine of up to $5,000 and six months in jail in many forests. Not only are there fewer opportunities for dispersed camping, there are also fewer campgrounds. This campground in the Tahoe Forest was damaged by flooding and never reopened. There are no signs directing visitors to this campground, which used to have toilets, or to this one, which had toilets and water. The Forest Service claims it lacks funding to maintain roads and campgrounds, but has an annual budget of $6 billion and spends it freely. These boulders protect nothing in particular, while this road erodes away. Erosion can easily be controlled by rolling dips like this, which divert water. This road was closed by destroying it with heavy equipment. And this one. Most ordinary Americans don't even know what's happening. They only discover a favorite road or campsite is now off limits when they visit a forest. I grew up here and there's a lot of places I can't go that I went to as a kid, you know, growing up. There are many who believe the Forest Service has abandoned its congressional mandate to manage our public lands for multiple use and substituted a self-defined agenda while handicapped old people and children are excluded. The logical way to prevent motor vehicle damage is to identify vulnerable areas and protect them with signs, barriers, and enforcement. Instead, the Forest Service has instituted an elaborate policy restricting motorized travel always and everywhere. It seems to me like it's more uh, politics and the bureaucracy exerting its power and, uh, and I really wonder if the people who are leading this um, have enjoyed those experiences themselves. Do they know what they're denying their citizens? The travel plan. Doesn't that sound nice? It sounds, all we have to do is sign up and we're part of the travel plan, right? No, what it is is the travel plan is to keep us out of, off of public lands is what it is. Closing long-used roads, many of which are parts of county road systems essential to local residents and even obstructing county efforts to provide maintenance from local budgets to keep those roads open. I'll tell you, in the last three to four weeks, we've had four major search and rescue operations go on. Without these roads, we don't have a way to look for them. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if you've flown over the forest before, but you can't see much on the ground. I think my comment started off with something like, I'll be damned if I'm going to enforce the travel management plan and criminalize the good folks of my county. The Northern California d area I represent contains all or parts of nine national forests. Accordingly, the practices of the Forest Service have a significant impact on the local communities where they are situated. Sadly, many rural forest communities have been devastated by the decline of the timber industry and other restraints on multiple use access. The champions of public access to our public lands are fighting a losing battle against the overwhelming might of a federal agency with 220,000 employees and a six billion dollar a year budget. If forest users can't convince Congress to redirect the Forest Service back toward multiple use, the closing of our forests will sadly accelerate 